Hi everyone, welcome to these Python tutorials where we are putting special emphasis on image processing related tasks. In the last video, we started the discussion about understanding the terminology that helps us in better engineering or uh, deep learning models in future. So in the last video, we looked at scaling and now let's have a quick look at activation function. Now, first of all, what is activation function and what is the need for activation function? Let's take a step back to three, four videos ago where we talked about deep learning. We looked at artificial neuron. What is an artificial neuron? Well, it calculates the weighted sum of its input and adds the bias and decides whether the neuron should fire or not. Like Just like our regular neurons in the brain, it takes in information and then decides whether it should transmit that information or not. That's what an artificial neuron is. And in this example, this neuron is in the first hidden layer, which means it's getting input from the input layer. And this neuron could be in the second or third layer, right? Which means its inputs are coming from the previous neurons. That's all this is. Now, what does it do? It takes in this value, multiplies by the weight, and takes in this value, mu multiplies by the weight, adds all of those and adds the bias, and then uh, gives a value that helps us make a decision in terms of firing or not firing. Okay, so far so good. Now, what do we mean by weights? Weights is basically how important is that neuron? or the information coming from that neuron. If the weight is 0 0.1 here, and if the weight is 0.9 here, obviously you have much uh, higher weightage or much higher emphasis on the value information coming from this neuron. That's all it is. Now, the entire game of this neural network, the training of this neural network is updating these weights until our end result matches the expected result, okay? Matches means it's never a 100% match, but as close to the expected result as possible. That's what the entire game of this is. And hopefully in the next three, four, five videos, while we talk about activation function, we'll understand, I mean, uh, the terminology of deep learning, we get to that point where we get a nice comprehensive understanding in plain English with occasional math, but not scary math, in plain English, what are these neural networks? and uh, what is back propagation, what is gradient descent, we'll understand all of that. But for now, let's understand the, the function of uh, the use of activation function. So far, what do we have? The weighted average. Now, the activation function helps make that decision whether to fire or not to fire, okay? And we'll see how that happens in, in the next few slides, but this is the main uh, functionality or main reason why we need this activation function. Without this activation function, what type of values do we get out of this neuron? It's literally, it can be from minus one million, one million, minus infinity to plus infinity, because these values that are coming into this neuron can be, can be anything. Like we talked about scaling in the previous tutorial, right? What if you have uh, values uh, that are like one million, 10 million right here, and then this number can be a huge value? What if the next value that's coming in is just like 0 0.1? Then this number is a much smaller value. So to, to again, just like scaling where you bring everything between 0 to 1 or minus 1 to 1 or whatever, whatever the scaling does, right? To bring everything into some range that we can easily interpret. Activation function is doing something very similar. Activation function is, it, it is bringing the output to specific ranges that can help us in making decisions. And this is happening within, uh, the, when we talked about scaling, we are doing that as pre-processing while handling the data. And activation is happening during the training process as part of your actual model itself, okay? Because every neuron has an activation function associated with it. And the information goes through the activation function and then uh, it tells us whether it is fired or not fired in terms of this neuron. Now let's take this to a specific example that we hopefully all of us can relate to. Let's say there is a family of four, mom, dad, son, and daughter, and each of them come with certain weight in terms of uh, how much their opinion is valued in their household in terms of making a decision. In this example, the mom has 50% or 0 0.5 weight, dad has 0 0.2, less weight, um, and son has 0 0.3, okay? A bit uh, uh, less than mom, but higher than dad, and daughter has uh, 0 0.6, 
weight okay the highest weight of all of these and now let's uh, have a uh, look at an example of uh, okay which restaurant shall we go to for dinner tonight okay so first of all let's uh, start with thai food and uh, mom is not a big fan so the range is in this case uh, we are saying okay the range is between minus 100 to 100 minus 100 means you don't like it you hate it and 100 is you absolutely love it okay zero is neutral so mom is slightly below neutral when it comes to thai food dad absolutely loves it wants to go to thai son likes it doesn't absolutely love it but he's positive he's like not unhappy and daughter is unhappy <laughs> minus 40. now when you take these numbers and multiply with the weights and when you add them you get a value of minus seven now what does that mean in terms of a decision making process well let's look at another example right so it's the in this case this is a multi-class classification you have like uh, three four five different decisions right and then you want to pick one of these uh, three four five choices and you have to make one decision out of these uh, so the next one is okay shall we go out for sushi and again mom eh, neutral slightly below neutral dad doesn't like it son doesn't like it but daughter absolutely loves it well not 100 percent, but 50 percent. but because she has higher weight like 0 0.6 when you add all of these when you multiply the weights and uh, add all of these you get a value of two it's higher than thai food right so that means okay yeah let's go for sushi let's add one more let's add indian food mom and dad they don't like it they think that they can cook better food at home so why go out and waste money eating out uh, uh you know so that's the that's the financial decision i guess uh, i guess i'm i'm telling you the story of my house but uh, uh, uh anyway uh the son and daughter they kind of like it okay so when you do this math again you get a value of four here so where do we go obviously to Indian because four is higher than two and two is higher than minus seven so yes Indian so in our brains what we just did is a linear activation function which is my x equals to y when you multiply your minus seven with one it is minus seven two with one it is two and four with one it is four so in our mind we are saying okay the highest wins and this is the one okay but uh, let's introduce a different type of activation function okay first of all let's say okay the family wants uh, uh, you know first of all to eliminate the bad ones and then get the top two or top three then we can just look at okay this and this but how, mathematically how can we actually do that right so if you just look at a step function step function is where any value below zero automatically is given a value of zero any value above zero is given a value of one so if you run this exercise with our you know example a Thai food which is below zero will get a value of zero and anything above zero will get a value of one so here are zero one and one okay so this is one type of uh, activation function and why would you need these type of decisions for example instead forget that we are making a decision let's say I'm building I'm building uh, a uh, uh, you know piece of code that takes in an image and tells you what type of food that is. If I have a plate full of, uh, uh, you know, sushi, it should probably just say zero one zero, right? Because it knows it is sushi. And if it is Indian, it should say zero zero one. But what if I actually do a fusion of sushi and Indian? <laughs> yeah, then what should it actually say? So this is a multi-label problem. A given object can have multiple labels, not just a single label okay uh, which becomes a multi-class classification i'll talk about uh, multi-label multi-class in a separate video but i i'm just giving you a reason why this uh, this type of uh, solution exists okay now let's uh, look at a few other activation functions that are uh, quite common starting with sigmoid again sigmoid is very similar to step function except instead of going vertically up it has some sort of a slope right there so if you look at this it's like s again it goes from 0 to 1 so it takes all your input values and squeezes them between 0 to 1 this is very useful for uh, for a binary type of uh, applications where you need probability as an output okay what is the probability of something being a nuclei or a not a nuclei right so uh, this gives us a very good understanding of binary tan h is very similar to sigmoid except it rises very fast and it goes between minus 1 to 1 
So if you're looking at probability of two different events, then uh, if two events are separated very slightly, then you see very high probability for both of them. Okay, uh, so this is tan H, and uh, again, this is uh, used for binary classifications. ReLU, rectified linear unit, it's very simple. Below zero, the value is zero. Above zero, the value is linear. That's it. Okay, and this is used in convolutional neural networks. And this is used in the hidden layers. Again, uh, we'll get to that uh, when we start building our uh, building our neural networks. But just think that really is used as part of uh, very common as part of your uh, as part of your hidden layers. Softmax is used for multi-class classifications. Okay, uh, the reason is uh, it's it's think of this as a combination of multiple sigmoids, and uh, when you add the probabilities of each class they all add to one so if you want a clear winner of all of you know your classes let's say thai japanese or i mean sushi and uh, indian if you really want a definitive answer just convert them into probabilities and where each add to you know all of those add to one and then that's that softmax can do that leaky relu is very similar to relu except instead of zero right there below uh, you know it has a small very small gradient why because uh, uh, there is a problem called dead neurons because if uh, the value is zero for some of these neurons they're dead and they're not working in future Right? When you update the weights, when you subtract, for example, when you subtract certain weight, again, I'll talk about this in the upcoming tutorials, but when you're updating the weights, when it goes negative and you're basically saying, okay, yeah, it's zero, then that neuron is dead. So instead of making that dead, instead of keeping that alive, there is a small gradient right here. Okay, and these two are not that common, so let's not uh, spend much time talking about them. So let's take that information and apply that to the example we are talking about, the Thai food and sushi or Indian. So step function, we already saw that, right? I mean, Thai zero, sushi one, and Indian one, because these two are positive, that's a negative value. Now, if you look at sigmoid, how does that work out? We'll, I'll show you the example in Python in a second, and I'll share the notebook with you so you can do this yourself. But uh, when, you, when you run these numbers by our sigmoid, you get a values of, uh, you know, 0 0.309 for Thai. Obviously, that's ruled out. For sushi, you get 0.88 and Indian 0.982. So sushi is somewhere around here. Indian is somewhere around here, right? You have two and four. So two, you get like a value of 0.88 apparently. For four, you get a point uh, value of 0 0.982. And uh, notice that they all do not add to one because each of this is like a binary classification. Is it Thai or not? Is it sushi or not? Is it Indian or not? Now, if you look at uh, uh, ReLU, it's 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 pretty straightforward again it's zero if it's below zero and two and four right i mean linear above zero finally let's look at sigmoid sigmoid is like uh, individual uh, uh, in, uh, sorry this is uh, softmax softmax is like individual sigmoids put together except the values total to one now if you look at that here you get uh, uh, you get a value of four zeros one five point one one nine point eight eight so in this case, it clearly tells me 88% it's Indian. So in case at home, if you are going through this, just use this softmax and then and then and then uh, figure it out, okay, uh, to make a decision. Okay, so now let's uh, jump on to our Colab notebook so we can uh, quickly look at these using the example that we just uh, we just established. Okay, here is the notebook, and uh, I'll share this with you. I made a quick description of uh, what we are talking about and eventually this is Thai, Sushi and Indian, minus 7, 2 and 4 and how do these various uh, activation functions actually behave. Uh, so let's go ahead and import our array and uh, you can see linear is basically minus 7, 2, 4 and in this case I have a constant of 2 so we are just multiplying each by 2 linear right this is a linear function so you get minus 14 4 and 8 here now if you look at the step function again let's go ahead and run this uh, anything below 0 return a 0 anything above 0 return a 1 so obviously 0 1 1 this is how we ended up with 0 1 1 earlier sigmoid is 1 over 1 plus e to the power of minus x right that's the equation there and let's run our inputs through these and in addition to printing out the inputs, I'm also printing out binarization. So what do you do when you get these type of uh, uh, you know, outputs from the network? You want to convert that into a decision or a classification. So here I'm saying that if my result is greater than 0.5 probability, 
or 0.5 from the sigmoid output, then go ahead and say that's true. Okay, so if you look at the probability, the first one is 0 0.304, uh, 309, and the, this is 0.88, this is 0.98, and false, true, and true. So this is how sigmoid can be used for classification in general. Uh, you know, definitely binary classification. Now, if you look at tan h, let's go ahead and run this. This is very similar to sigmoid. I did not add this binarized, but you can add that here if you want. But one thing I want you to notice is the difference in terms of the values. You know that sigmoid goes from zero to one. That's why this value is so close to zero. And these are 0.88 and 0.98, close to one. Here, this value is close to minus one because tan h goes from minus one to one. But notice this one. 96% or 0.96 and 0.999. These two are very close by that uh, and higher than sigmoid. And we know that because tan h is rising faster. Okay, so these are the values uh, for tan h. Rectified linear unit is pretty straightforward. You get 0, 2, 4 because anything below 0 is 0. Anything above 0 is equal to x. So it's a straight line. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a linear relationship. Leaky ReLU is like ReLU, except on the negative side, it goes very slowly down. So we are multiplying the x if it is below 0 with a value of 0.1. So it's very slow uh, decrease. Otherwise, just return the value x, right? So you can imagine that our minus 7 is minus 0.7. And above 0, it's 2 and 4. Let's look at softmax. And uh, softmax is... Uh, in this case, as you can see, we already looked at the result, but I just want to show you that the sum of all of these, when you add these three probabilities, they add to one. So softmax is very useful when you have multi-class classification. You have many classes, like sometimes you may have 30 classes, 40 classes, different types of uh, skin cancer. You have different images. You have several different, different types of skin cancer lesions. And you want to say, okay, which one of these does this image belong to? So it gives you seven probabilities and you often take the highest probability as the winner. Okay. So again, this is a great use case where uh, softmax can definitely help. So to wrap this video, just a quick uh, few suggestions like sigmoid works very well for uh, classification for classifiers in general and sigmoid and tan h are avoided in the hidden layers. We'll talk about this, uh, something called vanishing gradient problem. Okay, just remember that term. We'll talk about it later. But for now, sigmoid is avoided in the hidden layers, meaning when you're using uh, uh, activation function for neurons in the hidden layers, use ReLU, rectified linear unit. Activation function for the outside decision-making layer, the output layer where you make the decision, where you convert the final values into some sort of a probability or some sort of an output, that's when you use sigmoid or softmax. Sigmoid for binary classification or multi-label classification where you where each class is a, uh, think, thought of as a binary problem, sigmoid can really help. Softmax for multi-class classification because you want the winner of a bunch of multiple classes. So I hope this provides a quick, uh, again, overview of uh, activation functions. In the next video, let's look at a different uh, uh, term that is common in our deep learning. So thank you very much. Please do like these videos, subscribe to this channel, spread the word if you think these are useful for your colleagues and friends. Thank you again.